Sue? Excuse me? Your name is Sue, right? It is. Wow. What? We're finally talking. We are. I mean, after all this time? It's been a while now, I guess. And it was just as easy as saying that one word. Sue. Who knew it would be that easy? Look, okay, and please, don't take this the wrong way, but I'm not entirely sure I like that we're talking. You don't? I think... No. I'm pretty sure I preferred it when we never spoke at all. Oh. Damn. Oh. God, I... I, I crossed the line. I, I crossed the line and you hated. I think you might have crossed the line. I... I am so sorry. That's okay. I, I should shut up now. I think that would be for the best. Right. Okay. I can do that. I, I can shut up. The end. Okay. You know my name. That's a little weird. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I'm sorry, but it is. Well, of course I know your name, Sue. Do you mind if I call you Sue? Look, okay, I'll let you know I have Mace in my purse. Oh, calm down. I know your name. Because your therapist has come to the door, stood there, smiled, and said, Sue, every Monday night for the last 18 months. Hello? Didn't realize you paid attention to that. Of course I'd pay attention to that. Huh. But I wouldn't want you to be mad at me. And I definitely would not want you to mace me. So, like I said, the end. I'm afraid I don't know your name. Excuse me? You remembered my name, but I don't know yours. Wow, that, that's probably because my therapist comes to the door, stands there, glowers basically, and says, It's time. He's this super strict, super scary Freudian. Oh my god, he does seem scary. Is he German? <laughs> he is. We do the whole routine. I sit on the couch, he sits behind me. All very formal. Actually, I'm not entirely sure if he knows my name. I bet it's Albert. What? Your name. A Albert? Yeah, you just look like an Albert. If I had to guess. Wow, okay, ouch. <laughs> what? You don't want to look like an Albert. No, no self-respecting man wants to look like an Albert. Fine. I bet it's Herman then. Double ouch. Or Thaddeus. Okay, you're not making any friends here, Sue. Or Simon. Simon? I go to school with a guy named Simon. <laughs> I'm kidding. I always thought that was like the meanest name ever. Please. Simon's parents should be in therapy. For child abuse, thank you! My name's David. Nothing special, but that's my name. That's a nice name. Please, my name is Sue. I'm not one to judge in the naming department. Well, it's nice to meet you, Sue. Likewise, David. So, wait, you've really never noticed me during all these months we've been waiting here? I never said I didn't notice you. Because I've sure noticed you. You have? Absolutely. Lots. Okay. In fact, I spent the first couple of months trying to catch your eye over the magazines we were reading. I made a huge effort trying to do this. That's what you were doing? It was. Because I swear, I thought you either had an astigmatism or a tick. Are you serious? You do this thing with your magazine when you read. You'd raise it, and you'd lower it. And you'd raise it, and you'd lower it. And you'd raise it, and you'd lower it. I swear it was almost hypnotic to witness out of the corner of my eye. I'll be upfront with you here. In my sessions, I'm dealing with obsessive compulsive issues. That explains so much. I'm 
doing much better with that stuff now, I'm happy to say. I'm glad to hear that. Dr. Riefenschneider has me on this very mild antidepressant. A wonderful side effect of which is that it has wiped out that OCD stuff altogether. Not entirely. You still do this thing where you rub your forefinger over your upper lip when you read. You really have noticed me. I, I don't know. Maybe sometimes, now and then. Okay. I don't mean to cross another line here, but now that we're talking and we only have who knows how many more minutes till one of our therapists walks through the door, I feel like I should be upfront with you. I've also thought about you outside this room. I'm talking now. I feel like I should come clean about this. You've thought about me? I have. But why? Why would you do that? Am I scaring you? A little. I'm sorry. It's just, I've thought about what, what your life would be like. What kind of apartment you'd want. I've imagined you would be a first grade teacher. You did? Yeah, I don't know. Just something about you. Your demeanor, your scarf, the impeccably patient way you turn the pages of Us Weekly. I could just see you reading Where the Wild Things Are to a class of screaming six-year-olds and keeping your calm while kids all around you ripped each other's hair out and vomited all over the place. That's... Wow. Okay, I'll come clean about this. In my sessions here, I've been dealing with the ways I put up walls and push people away. An old part of me wants to run, screaming into the night now that you've told me all this, or simply just change my sessions to Tuesdays. I won't, and I'll just say thank you. You're welcome. And just so you know, there's no need to worry about changing your session night. This is my last day with Dr. Riefenschneider. He's closing up his practice and moving to Vermont to spend his twilight years running this little candle shop. And I only wish I was joking, because it is just so Freudian. I mean, candles? Oh my god. So, starting next Monday, I'll be seeing Dr. McBee down in the village. Dr. Riefenschneider says he's a kid which is cool, who wears shorts in the summer. I'm looking forward to a change of pace. I'm sure. But, I don't know. I just saw you sitting here tonight, and I figured I had to say hello before I could say goodbye. I imagine you'd be a carpenter. You have? On several occasions. A carpenter? Holy sh- Look, this is really hard for me to say out loud. I'm also dealing with issues of trust and abandonment here in my sessions. So you're really pushing all my buttons. A carpenter. I'm sorry, that's just the kind of thing guys dream about being mistaken for. You just have very strong forearms. I felt like you knew a clean line when you saw one. I imagine you designed and you made your own furniture. It's really rough-hewn lawn benches and chairs. That you'd rub with linseed oil while NPR played in the background. I love NPR. Oh my god. So do I. <laughs> I'm sorry. Car talk. Uh, please, I don't even own a car and I live and breathe by car talk. Absolutely. I imagine you lived in Chelsea. I imagine you lived up in Columbia. And that you have a cat. <laughs> and that you had this enormous moose head thing. For some reason. And that I'd ask you out for coffee first, but things would move quite fast from there. And we'd have dinner at Gramercy Tavern. See, now I picture Bolt's Hazer. And you'd take buggy rides in Central Park. We'd go rollerblading there on weekends. I've never even been rollerblading. And we'd move in together one day. Yeah, in a shabby loft in Williamsburg with a very wheezy radiator. But we'd love everything about it. And we'd adopt a dog. And join the local food community. And make casserole. And, and bake banana bread. And have a baby, or, or maybe two. Just you and me and the family. Out in Williamsburg. Forever.
I... I'm studying accounting. I really... God, I really wish I were a carpenter, but I'm... I'm sorry, I'm so not. And I'm interning at Publishers Clearinghouse. It's basically the devil's work. And I live in this crappy walk-up in Spanish Harlem. And I live on Roosevelt Island. No one lives on Roosevelt Island. Yet, I do. What's that about? And my real name's Albert. I'm, I'm not kidding. I never tell anyone that's my real name when I first meet them, because it makes for the worst first impression ever. And I have a boyfriend. Actually. We have issues of respect, which is basically why I'm here by myself. I'm terrified of the thought of being with him. But this, this was so great, David Albert. <laughs> it was, Sue. It, it really was. Sue? Wait, before you go, I just wanted to say goodbye. Hello.